Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money. Cause I got it in here. So if you want to make six figures, you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You gotta be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really wanna be successful, some days you're gonna have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you gotta want it. You gotta go days without, listen to me, you gotta wanna be successful so bad that you forget to eat. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in free season. I'm gonna say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA, and even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meet with you, you say, I don't wanna talk to your TA. I don't pay the TA, I pay you to teach me. So you're going to have to find some time to meet me. If I got to meet you at the mall, if I got to meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me. All men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s. They went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You got to have heart. That's number one. Watch number two. Number two, catch number two. I wrote it down. I wanted to make sure you got it. It says, to be, watch this, watch this. We're talking about sacrifice now. The important thing is this. You're right in why I'm saying it. Because I only have about three more minutes. Listen to me. The most important thing is this. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. That's the number two thing. You got to catch that one. To be able to, listen to me, at any moment. Some of you, you can make sacrifices when Monday Night Football is not on. You can make a sacrifice, but when the game come on, for some reason, you just attach to it. For some of you, when your favorite show come on, you, you, can, be, you can make sacrifices on Sunday when there ain't nothing going on. But when your favorite show comes on Monday, bam, some of you, you focus into the phone ring, and then you're like, I gotta answer it. If I don't answer the phone, I'm gonna die. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm going to hurt somebody. Some of you need to give up your cell phone because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. And somebody has told you, you couldn't live without it. I'm talking about going deep now, giving up stuff. Watch what it says. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could be. I don't do well in math, you're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. But I dare you to fail in writing for a whole year to see if you can get to the end. I dare you to fail. I dare you to take that same class over and over again. I dare you to stop dropping classes like you soft. Always want to give up. I'm dropping. Why are you dropping? 
I'm so grateful that the slaves didn't drop and quit. Say, I'm just going to stop. I'm a slave. I'm just going to be a slave. I'm going to quit. Listen to me. The slaves said, we will live because one day we will become. See, whatever you're doing, however you spend your time, that tells you who you are. So think about what it is you like to create in your life experience. Once I look at how you commit your time, once I do an evaluation on how you spend your time, I can tell you exactly what you're committed to. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? A lot of people, as soon as they punch out, they rush home to sit on the couch. They rush home to do nothing. They rush home just to, to sit there and figure out, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep, do it all tomorrow. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more playing. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. This is a life class. That means that we have an opportunity to learn how to maximize our lives. Think of the things that you're doing that somebody else could be doing. And think of yourself as a precious commodity that you are going to reserve your energy for your highest and best use. All the successful people had the exact same amount of time that you have each day. So what did they do that you may not be doing? They invested in themselves on the weekends, after work, in the evening, they put time in something that they wanted to do. They invested their own time in themselves. We are busier than any other generation we have seen in the last three to four hundred years. We are just as busy as we can be and we think because we're busy, we're effective. But I want you to challenge your schedule for a minute and ask yourself, are you, are you really being effective or is your life cluttered with all kinds of stuff that demands you and drains you and taxes you and stops you from being your highest and best self? And are you substituting busyness and all the chaos that goes along with busyness from being effective? takes time to be creative. You were meant to be creative. You were created in the likeness and the image of a creator and in that likeness and in that image you have creativity. If you had time, you would be creative. The most important thing is to value our time. So what are you going to do with this time? How much of it do you think you've already used up? What are you going to do today? The only thing that you can control that influences success in life is how hard you work, how honest you are, and how well you deal with others. You can control those variables. When you have a dream, and the dream isn't something you dream and then it happens, the dream is something you never knew was going to come into your life, Dreams always come from behind you, not, not right between your eyes. It sneaks up on you. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face, this is who you are, this is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition, always whispers. It never yeah. I've always, since I was um, 
in my late teens, early 20s, hey. and I just never got around to it. I finally started realizing as I was getting older by, you know, my early 40s that I better really do it. It's either now or, or I'm never going to do it. We are here, and, and as you struggle to, to make your dreams happen, to live the impossible, we're thinking of you tonight. I think some people, and maybe I used to think once you got successful, you could, ah, you're successful, and it, okay, you now you can kind of just relax a little bit, and, but that's not the case at all. You have to pedal even harder. You have to work even more. Um, there are more opportunities that need more uh, time and dedication, uh, and in order to do them well, you have to uh, really, really uh, hunker down and do the hard work. But I've never been afraid of hard work, and I always tell people when I'm asked, and it's pretty often that I'm asked about uh, dreams and achieving uh, creative goals, uh, that I, I always believe that the, the bridge between reality and a dream is work. Um, and I always, in moments of despair and doubt and dark days, uh, focus on, on the work. I show up and I work and I work and I work. Amendment. What are you people? On dope? What I'd like for you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream because I'm in a room full of dreamers. Think about your dream right now. I want you to think about it and envision it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life. I started out as was indicated by Jack. It's very humble beginnings. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't ha care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. No one, ladies and gentlemen, could have convinced me when I started out just over six years ago working on my dream and I want you to think about whatever your dream is because I was willing to take a chance and most people won't do that most of the people that you talk to to try and bring them into the business these are not risk takers most people have done all that they're ever going to do they raise a family they earn a living and then they die but people who are running toward their dreams life has a special kind of meaning and here's what i will share with you that in the process of working on your dreams you are going to incur incur a lot of disappointment a lot of failure a lot of pain a lot of setbacks a lot of defeats but in the process of doing that you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. I don't have any college training, but I met a high school teacher who one day changed my life. I was waiting on another student, and when he came in, he said to me, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And I said, I, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter, follow my directions now. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. And he came from behind his desk and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. 
Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. If you want to make your dream become reality, the people that are running at their dreams know that it's possible that you can live your dream. That it's necessary that you're relentless, that you have a plan of action, that you are creative. The people that are living their dream are finding winners to attach themselves to. The people that are living their dreams are the people that know that it's, if it's going to happen, it's up to them. And they're resolving within themselves, it's not over until I win. It takes the dream, because if you don't have the dream, you'll never find the 7 to 10 hours a week. I can guarantee you that. You're busy. We're all busy. You're working. You're picking up the dry cleaning. You're making dinner. You're taking the kids to football practice. You're paying the bills. you got to sleep. you got to eat. All this. You're using 24 hours of every day already. So what's got to get you? have got to find a dream, something that will take you to the frame of mind where you will change the way you live. You will change the daily actions you take, and you will change your mindset for a two to four year period. You got to set yourself up to win. You got to set yourself up with a process that allows you to consistently grow, consistently enjoy your life, and consistently produce the results that you're really after. Somebody told you that hard work don't pay off. I'm here to tell you if you work for it, if you're willing to put in that sweat, that blood, and those tears, baby, I'm telling you, you can have what you want, be what you want, do what you want. Are you hearing me? Keep going till you see. Don't quit. Don't give up. Listen to me. Don't give up. Don't give in. You hang in there. You, you hang in there because if you quit right now, you ain't gonna never see it. But if you hold on, if you hold on, everything you dreamed of, everything you envisioned, everything you worked for, it's coming. But you can't quit or give up before you get it. If you work hard, you can't have it. It ain't nothing you can't have. You deserve it. It ain't nothing you can't have if you're willing to work for it. It ain't nothing you can't have if you're willing to persevere, if you're willing to stick in there, if you're willing to stay, if you're willing to fight. It ain't nothing you can't have. Are you hearing what your boy is telling you? It's yours. It's yours. I'm coming. I'm telling you, it's yours. You can have it. It's yours. You can do it. It's yours. You can be it. It's yours. If ET can do it, listen to me, anybody can do it. High school dropout, homeless, lived in abandoned buildings, 12 years to get a four-year degree. If you want it, if you want it as bad as you want to breathe, if you really, really want it like you say you want it, you can have it. This ain't for the weak and the uncommitted. Are you hearing me? Success is not for the weak and the uncommitted. This is physical. Sometimes it's going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to be painful. It's hard. Yep, it's hard. Yep, it's difficult. Yep, why? Because the process is weeding out the weak. It's weeding out the weak. And so sometimes you got to play hard. You got to play physical. You got to play tough. Execution is worship. You got to get to a place that when you start it, you get through the middle of it, the doldrum, and you finish it. Are you hearing me? And not just finish, you finish strong. Listen to me very closely. Most of you, the reason why you'll never be successful is because you procrastinate. You procrastinate. You never finish stuff. Don't get caught up in, well, I've tried it four or five times and things didn't work out. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. The secret to success is finish it. Execution is worship. Are you hearing me? Oh, you better hear what I'm telling you, baby. Listen to me very closely. Execution is worship. I was getting D's and F's and the world was telling me I was a loser. My, my teachers were telling me a loser. My friend's parents weren't saying to my face that I was a loser, but I could see it in their eye. Like I used to sit there as a 13, 14, 15, 16 year old and look at my class and my teachers and I'm like, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show all of you. You think I suck? I'm gonna be the biggest, best person on earth. I come here to remind you that there's only one thing you can do. The only thing you can do, the only thing that can trump your DNA, the only thing that is controllable, if you want it, 
if you want this, is work. Work. Like, there's gonna be nothing else. Like, yes, work smart. I can hear the cynicism already. Yes, it's better to have a better strategy and to work smarter. But here's the punchline. Nothing happens without it. And I mean a lot of it. And the more you want, the more work you gotta put in. The bigger your ambition, the more you gotta punch that clock. And you gotta give up fun and leisure and laziness. This message is for the people like, oh, I don't have time. Like, woe is me. Like, why am I not as big as you? I don't have money. I don't, it's bad. Like, I didn't get a chance. If you're complaining, you better self audit yourself. Because if you're complaining and I audit you, I promise you, I promise you, I will find four hours that you're not doing jack. You're sleeping. And by the way, I'm a fan of sleep. Sleep is important. So let's, but, but you might be sleeping eight hours and seven's cool too. That's one, right? You're playing mobile games? Like, you've got time for Angry Birds and you're complaining? I truly think that if you complain, it's literally the second you start the sentence is a step back in a non-winning way. It's just important for people to understand that complaining has no value. And if you complain about not having enough money, work more. It's super simple. Let your actions dictate instead of sitting there and feeling like you're not in control. Your actions, my friends, are much, much, much louder than your words. If you're gonna come to me and tell me you don't have time, in a world where I work every second for 18 hours a day, right? You're gonna have a tough time making me feel bad that it's not happening for you because that's part of it. If you ever say to somebody else, why are you up so early? That is the quickest tell to you are not a winning player. If that has ever crossed your mind, you've lost. You need to work harder and faster. There's really nothing else. I mean, how do I, I'm exhausted every day, but I'm making enormous amounts of things happen in my 18 hours, right? Not only am I working 18 hours, but I'm working fast as hell in those 18 hours and I'm prioritizing what's important and what's not. You've just gotta persevere, no matter what it is. And so I think if you wanna pop, if you wanna be an anomaly, you've gotta act like one. All of us, at some time or another, have agonized over making a decision. Some decisions are major decisions. And also there are a lot of small decisions that we don't make. That they tax our minds, they drain our energy. They create a lot of anxiety and nervousness and mental torment because we don't take care of it. We decide not to decide, which is a decision. Deciding to decide, to act, is a major, major challenge for all of us at different points in different areas of our lives. And there are things that happen to us along the way, experiences that we have that prevent us from working through the mental block of acting, of doing those things that we know we ought to do. And so what I want you to think about is what is there that you know you need to do, that you want to do this, but for some reason or another, you've been holding back. For some reason or another, you just have not been able to gather your nerves or be able to work through the procrastinating or putting it off or justifying or blaming. Some reason or another, you just haven't done it. And you know you ought to do this. You really want to do this, but you don't know why you haven't done it. We know that this is not easy because in order to begin to reinvent your life, you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort that you really have got to put all of yourself into it. It's very challenging to act, to do those things. There are times when you're looking at it and you say, I, I know I need to do this, but I don't feel like it. 
I don't want to do it. I know I need to do it, yet leave me alone. No, I don't want to do it. So what do we do? What are those things that, that cause us to do like that? I think that among the things that prevent us from acting is the fear of failure. And if you've already failed, you don't want to fail again. The pain of that, the disappointment, the fear of loss is another thing. Because many times when we do those things that we know we need to do, we feel that we might lose somebody that we love very much and care about. We don't want to hurt anybody. Many of us don't act because we want other people's approval. We want everybody to like us and to accept us. And that's not possible. Many of us don't do the things that we want to do and don't act because of lack of self-confidence. We don't believe enough in ourselves. There are many reasons why we don't act. There are other things though that affect us is that not wanting to take personal responsibility. We want somebody else to do it. And we, many times we pick up our inability to do certain things from people that we love, people that we admire. We identify with them and we live in the context of their ideas, their opinions and their life patterns. We buy into it unconsciously. But there's some people it takes that kind of crises to bring them into reality in order for them to act in their own best interest. Some people have to hit rock bottom in order to rise. I don't know why. You want to begin to look out on your life and what you want for you. And I think that when we begin to focus in the area of what does it take for us to act, I think we can say events can inspire us to act at that particular event in his life. Circumstances. See, life also are things that can inspire us to act. See, we don't have the courage, and that's what it takes, courage. It takes guts to do that which you know you need to do. If you don't have the courage to act, life many times will move on you and make you act. Life will whoop your butt so bad. You will be so miserable. You will catch so much hell. You say, yes, I will do it. What do you want me to do? Take me. So I'm saying that look at something in your life. It might be just writing a letter to somebody to say thank you. It might be just to apologize to somebody. See, many things we don't do is because of the fact we want people to like us. There's some necessary losses in life. When you decide acting in your best interest, you're gonna lose some friends. Everybody's not going to approve of you. There's some people that won't like you. Who do you think you are? You're arrogant. What do you think you can do? You think you can get away with that? You're selfish. It's my life. And so what I'm saying to you is that as you begin to look out on your life, this is challenging. This is not easy, acting. So what are the things that we can begin to do to harness our will. Number one, you've got to bring it out and look at it. You've got to take the power out of it. You've got to expose it to the truth. And the truth is that it has no power over you. So write down something you want to act on, but for some reason that you've been holding back and look at it. The next thing is, ask yourself the question, is it helping you to continue to put it off? If it's an asset for you to continue to, to procrastinate, then continue to do that. But if it's a liability for you, if it's causing you some mental and some emotional challenges or perhaps a financial problem, look at that. Examine that for what it is. Next step, ask yourself, what's blocking you? What's preventing you from acting? Why don't you have the courage to handle that? Why won't you face that? What are you running away from? What kind of avoidance behavior are you engaged in? So what is the worst thing that can happen? I want you to visualize that, experience that, feel the nervousness and the discomfort. And the more you run it in your mind, the less power that it will have. Next is, how will you feel after taking this action? When we look out on our lives, you ask the question, what are you going to do? Look at, as you think about this that you know you need to handle, 
what are you going to do? And then write down three strong reasons on why you know you must take action. And be explicit and descriptive in your reasons because your reasons have power. Your reasons will drive you. When you have doubt, when your faith becomes weak, your reasons will fortify your faith. When you have an inner conversation, say, no, don't do that. Your reasons will become your rod and your staff to comfort you, to take you through those challenging moments. So write down your reasons. And what you will find, that when you decide to act, when you decide to take life on, and let me warn you, it can be painful, it will be uncomfortable, and that's where the growth is. When you're uncomfortable, when you're stretching out, when you're taking life by the collar, you're going to get thrown to the ground again and again and again. But when you have determination and you know that what you're doing is right, it gives you your life, it gives a special meaning and power to you, you will have some power from on high. You will discover some things about yourself that will begin to electrify your personality. You begin to discover some things about you that you don't know you've got when you put yourself in that type of challenging situation. It's a wondrous thing that a decision to act releases energy in the personality. For days on end, a person may drift along without much energy, having no particular sense of direction and having no will to change. Then something happens to alter the pattern. It may be something very simple and inconsequential in itself, but it stabs awake, it alarms, it disturbs. In a flash, one gets a vivid picture of oneself, and it passes. The result is decision, sharp, definitive decision. In the wake of the decision, yes, even as a part of the decision itself, energy is released. The act of decision sweeps all before it and the life of the individual may be changed forever. When you decide to make decisions, to act, you begin to access power within you that will increase your self-esteem, that will increase and enhance your personal power. That, that puts you in charge of life. And life has a whole new meaning for you. There's a sense of personal freedom. Doesn't mean you're not gonna have any struggles. Doesn't mean that you're not gonna have any challenges. Doesn't mean that you're not going to suffer any defeats. No, 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 it doesn't mean that. But what it does mean, that you're putting yourself in the position to grow. You're putting yourself in line with your higher calling and your higher self and that's what life is about.